Hi everyone, it's good to see you. My name is Chris and today we're going to learn Lagrange by ZZ Top and their drummer Frank Beard. Lagrange is one of ZZ Top's most famous songs and is now considered a rock classic. It was released in 1973 and when we listen to it, you'll notice it's a song that features the guitar with a very recognizable riff but also with lots of space and for a long distance guitar soloing. The shuffle groove by drummer Frank Beard basically has no groove variations. His role is to support the guitar riff, keeping that strong shuffle groove and to be the engine by maintaining a continuous and constant drive throughout the song. So let's go through the different song sections, break them down and how to play them and also learn what makes them so special. The intro section is played on the rims of the snare and this is hands only and no bass drum involved. So we already said it's a shuffle, so we are not feeling it as one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, but as swung or shuffled eighth notes based on triplet. So the and is pushed back a little to the third triplet. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And now let's take a look at the sticking and what the hands are playing. And if we leave out the left hand, the right hand is playing the spang, spang, lang, spang, lang, spang, lang, the regular swing pattern. Now the left hand makes it a shuffle and by playing the three note rough with a right left right sticking we get that galloping sound which is what we want. And Frank Beard flams beats two and four sometimes so I wouldn't worry too much about hitting both hands in perfect unison every time. Next is the fill that leads from the clean guitar intro riff into the distorted riff. Let's have a listen. All right, one more time. The fill has a constant sticking of right, left, left with an accent on the second note of the right hand. So let's practice this first between hi-hat and snare drum. Hi-hat is playing the downbeats and the snare is playing the second and third triplet. And notice that the fill starts on the last triplet of beat four. Here we go, nice and slow. And for the last quarter note, the orchestration changes just a bit. Left hand on tom one and right hand on tom two. So let's practice this as a two bar loop, this time at the original tempo. And 
now we're getting to the Texas shuffle groove, meaning hi-hat or right cymbal are playing quarter notes and snare drum and bass drum are playing the shuffle pattern in unison. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So of all these instruments and what's going on, let's have a look at the left hand first. Frank Beard doesn't play the snare drum with uh, great dynamic depth. The snare has a relatively narrow volume range, but he creates nuance by playing the two and four as rim shots. And to be able to do that, we need to be aware of the up and down motion of our wrist and the note before two and four, they need to be an upstroke to whip out the following accents. So we have tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap. And after we feel comfortable doing that, we can add the bass drum and try to be relaxed as possible. Tension will never lead to speed or a good drum sound. And I know it's easier said than done, but um, if you don't have the speed, no worries. Slow down, Te slow the tempo down and enjoy how your body relaxes and play it for a long period of time with easiness and with repetition muscle memory will help you build speed. And if speed isn't an issue, do this exercise to work on your shuffle quantization. And you can play around by playing the offbeats a little bit later to make them swing even harder. And the last element we need to add is the quarter note on the hi-hat or right cymbal. Frank Beard plays it quite powerful to give it a nice quarter note push. The last segment for today is the fill right before the guitar solo. Let's listen to get an idea what that might be. One more time. So the fill is based on quarter note triplets. So a preliminary exercise would be to play this underlying rhythmic structure of quarter note triplets around the kit and leading with our right hand. These quarter note triplets are now evenly spaced with right left kick and that's at least the idea behind the fill. Frank Beard doesn't play the cleanest version of this fill but perfection isn't what gives it character. He plays it with a raw and a rough rock attitude and that's what makes it so unique and also difficult to duplicate. Your guidance at least uh, when learning this fill and your orientation inside this fill can always be your right hand following the quarter note triplets, all right? So let's give it a try.
And now that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I wish you a lot of fun practicing these grooves and fills. And let me know your thoughts in the comments on your struggles that we all have and share and your achievements practicing it and what styles, sounds and um, yeah, you would like to see in the upcoming lessons and topics for future lessons. And uh, then I hope I see you next time. Take care everyone and bye bye.